Hello Year 6, this is your biology lesson to have a go at at home before you come to secondary school in September. And this is the only piece of equipment we need for this practical, a 30 centimetre ruler. We're going to be looking at reaction times today and you'll be able to compare your reaction time to somebody else in your household or you'll be able to change a whole host of uh, different variables to see how they affect your reaction time. So the reaction time experiment itself is really straightforward. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Before I do, we're going to go to our um, work pack and have a look at what our investigation entails. So let's have a look at our uh, investigation pack. We've got the first page there where we can see a picture of the ruler drop so it gives us an idea of what that looks like. Uh, we've got our big question, what affects our reaction time and anything that you're thinking at first maybe just pause this video now and put down some of your thoughts about the kind of factors that could affect our reaction time. Uh, it could be age, could be how tired we are, when we last ate food could have an impact, which hand we use to catch the ruler might have an impact, okay? This uh, second page here is the planning page and I'm going to add all of my detail using post-it notes just to speed it up so you don't have to watch me writing. You write straight onto the sheet, you don't need to use post-it notes, it just makes it a bit quicker for the video, a bit less boring for you to watch, okay? So we're investigating reaction time and a lot of the things we could uh, change I'm going to add into this section here. Now you can pause this video at any point in time, have a chat, what different ideas can you come up with. I'm just going to lay them out and follow you through the process and then you can do that for yourself, changing whichever variable you want to change. So the things that we change are called the independent variables, okay, so we're independently deciding to change that. You've probably heard that at primary school already. We could change the person. We could change the hand that catches the ruler. We could change the amount of sleep we've had, so maybe on a a day when we've had lots of sleep, we could have a go at doing it. And then a day where we haven't had as much, we could try again. We could do before and then after having food. And those kind of tie into the time of day. So we could look at it at different times of day. What I'm choosing to do for this experiment is I'm going to change the person. So I'm going to compare my reaction time to two other people. OK, so we call this the independent variable, the thing that we've decided to change. Now, because I've already explained that we're going to use a ruler to test our reaction time, the only thing we could measure, which is the dependent variable, is the distance the ruler is caught. So I can't put any other options in there at the moment. And that is what I will be using, the distance the ruler is caught. So our question is, who has the fastest reaction time, okay? Out of myself and the two other people that I'm going to compare my results to, who has the fastest reaction time? And things that I'm going to keep the same, basically everything else. I only want to change one thing in an investigation and then everything else I keep the same to make it a fair test. So I'm always going to get people, everyone involved to use their dominant hands, their writing hand. Uh, they should hopefully have all had a good night's sleep beforehand. If one person is particularly tired, then maybe we need to wait and do the test another day. We're all going to do it at the same time of day, therefore hopefully we've all had our dinner or our lunch or whatever it is that we're um, eating. Um, so that links in with time of day. The position of the ruler, and I'm going to talk more about that in a demonstration shortly and the position of the hand. And again, I'll talk about that in a moment's time. So what I've got is I've got three people of different ages and that's going to be the um, deciding factor, okay? Who's got the best reaction time based on the age of the person? So when we change the age of the person, we think what will happen to reaction time is it will decrease, okay? That's my prediction. 
So I'm saying as the age of the person increases, their reaction time will decrease. And the reason I'm saying that, I'm going to try and back up my ideas with an, uh, uh, um, a reason, is that we lose alertness with age. So that's going to be my prediction with a reason. So that's all of my starting planning information before I start my practical. Okay, I'm going to move that sheet out of the way and just keep that one over here so it's still in screen, we can refer to it. The next page is my obtaining evidence page. So I'm gonna set this up and then I'm gonna start collecting some results. So I've decided I'm going to change the person and my three people are person X, person Y, and person Z. And the thing that I'm going to measure is the distance I catch the ruler. And you can see each person is going to do the test one, two, three times, and then we can calculate a mean average. Okay, let's have a look at how we're going to uh, do that practical, and then let's gain us some results for ourselves. So the actual ruler drop experiment itself is pretty straightforward. We need to keep a few things in mind to um, effectively gain our results. One, we need to make sure that we've got the zero centimetres at the bottom, we're not upside down and on 30. Two, we need to make sure that the top of our thumb is in line with that zero centimetres. Uh, don't start up here, for example. And three, we need to make sure that we keep that distance that gap between our fingers and the ruler consistent all the time, whatever you should choose that to be. So I'm gonna have that like that. I've got somebody else who's going to hold the ruler. I can't drop it for myself. I need someone to do that for me. And I don't want to look at their hand when they drop it because that might give me a little telltale sign of when they're going to drop it. So I need to just keep an eye on the ruler and as soon as it drops, I catch and we measure from the top of the thumb again. So that one is 21 centimetres. Okay, time for you to gain some results of your own. I've now gained my results, and as you can see, I've displayed them in my table. One thing I realised that I should have added to the table before, so I'm gonna add it now, is that the distance is measured in centimetres. Okay, so I've added that there. So you can see I've got three results for each person and to work out the mean, I've added those three results and I've divided by three. Now what's really important here is that we press equals after we add the three results together before we divide by three. So here's my workings out. So when I add those three results together, the 15, the 22 and the 13, I get 50 and I pressed equals, and then I divided by three, and my calculator gave me 16.6 .6 recurring. Now, because all of my answers are to the nearest centimeter, you might have gone to the nearest millimeter, I have rounded that to 17 centimeters. And then for my results for person Y, I've got eight, nine, and eight. Those results are definitely looking like a fast reaction time. And I, Total those together, I have to put that slightly lower there. Total those together, 25, and divide by three, and that gives me 8.3 recurring, which I'm gonna round down to eight centimeters. And then person Z, um, they had 18, 12, and 14. So when I add those together, that comes to 44. Divide by three, having pressed uh, enter, of course, um, gives me 14.6 recurring, which I'm going to round to 15. Now, person X, Y, and Z are all different people, so they are um, going to be represented with a bar chart, okay? So we always put the thing that we change at the bottom of our bar chart, or, or any chart that we do, any graph we do. So in this case, it was the person. And what we measured was the distance I catch the ruler in centimetres. So I'm going to write this in. Distance I catch the ruler, and that was in centimetres. So now I can put the people at the bottom. 
So I can put person X, person Y, and person Z. And I've got to think about my scale on this side. And I can do quite a lot of planning with this. So I've got 17 as my biggest value. So I could go quite simply, I want to make it as big as possible, but I could go quite simply and just say that this kind of big square here is worth five. So that would be five, 10, 15, 20. And that takes up more than half the graph paper. So that's what I'm going to go for, okay? So there's zero, good to do these little lines. Notice how the line comes off that bold line, whereas these, uh, X, Y, and Z are going to be in the middle of the bar. So I haven't put them under the line. I've put them kind of sandwiched in the middle there. You can see there they are between those gaps. You'll see when I draw the bars what I mean. And then off this line here, we've got 10. Being careful to use those uh, grid lines that are there to help us on the graph paper get these evenly spaced. I don't want to just put my results in. I'm going up by five every time and then I can plot my results really carefully. So person X, they had 17 centimetres. So this, what I'm going to call a big box, is split into, um, it's actually... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's actually split into eight, which isn't that handy. Um, we'll do our best with this. So 17, I am going to say it's there. There is our bar for person X. Person Y, they were at eight. And person Z, they were at 15. Hopefully you'll use your ruler and pencil and you'll be able to do it slightly more carefully than I am. I'm trying to lean over the tripod and do it quickly so that you can see with probably the wrong pen. So you do it as carefully as you can. So we can now see the distance I catch the ruler for people um, X, Y and Z. Okay, let's... Uh, move this one out of the way, our planning sheet, and move this one over so that I'm stuck to the table, so I can have a look at the next page. So here's our final page of our pack. When we changed the person, now it'd be really useful at this point in time for me to give you an idea of the ages of these three people. Now, what I'm gonna say is this, Y was 10, X was 30, and Z was 40. Okay, so we've got three ages, and we said in our prediction that the older you get, the slower your reactions. Now let's have a look. The youngest person who was 10, that was person Y, they had the fastest reaction time because they caught the ruler at a really short distance. Now, reaction time for X and Z, fairly similar, not much in it. And actually, there's not that much difference in their ages compared to person Y. So that's quite, um, quite a good conclusion to make. There's so many different factors that will affect reaction time that we could um, use as a reason why um, X had the slowest reaction time. Okay, It could be down to tiredness or um, other distracting factors. Okay, so when we changed the age of the person, what happened to reaction time is it 
change. Now I've done a really basic response there. I'm hoping that in this section here, you're going to give me some really good feedback as to why you think those reaction times were different. We've got a um, reaction time table here and we can see the reaction times of uh, the distances and how that actually kind of translates to your reaction time. So if you have a distance of less than seven and a half centimetres, you have excellent reaction time. No one in my investigation has excellent reaction time. Person Y fits into this category, and so does person Z actually, of having a good reaction time, which is catching it between 7.5 and 15.9. So that is person Y and person Z. And person X, who had a reaction time of 17, they only have an average reaction time, so they fit into that category there, okay? We've got an extension task here. If you enjoyed that practical, then you can certainly have a go at the extension activity, which is, does caffeine improve reaction time? For this one, you are testing the reaction time of, a, of an adult, so you will need to be the person who drops the ruler, um, and then you can record that, all of your, your data and your graphs um, on additional paper, or maybe on the back of these sheets, um, and you can see how that affects it. Maybe uh, let them have a cup of coffee, and uh, maybe half an hour later you could test their reaction time. Uh, we're going to have a look at this section at the bottom now. Okay, we've got a table here where we're going to look at a different way of measuring our reaction time. And for this one, we're gonna to go to the computer, okay? And when we go onto the computer, this is what we're gonna type in, okay? Human benchmark tests reaction time. Okay, this one's gonna be quite good fun. So let's do that now. Okay, so here is that uh, website called Human Benchmark and it is the reaction time test. And you can see on our results page here, we have why not try out comparing the reaction time of your right and left hand, your dominant hand and your non-writing hand. And we can see here that the reaction time is measured in milliseconds, okay? So it's gonna give us much better results than just catching a ruler. The ruler can wobble off, your fingers might have been at different width or different position on the ruler at different points in time. However, the ruler is easily available. If you don't have a computer, then you can definitely use the, um, the ruler test to measure your reaction time. So we're actually getting our results in milliseconds, okay? So really kind of um, accurate and precise measurement. Accurate because it's a computer, so as soon as we click that mouse, it's collected the information, it hasn't got that human error, um, involved in it and precise because we're getting our answer in milliseconds so it's giving us a very um, high resolution answer okay and don't worry if you don't understand those words now we'll cover those a lot when you come to secondary school in September so we're going to do each test for the right hand and the left hand five times each I'll show you how it works I'll pause the video you can get your own results and then I'll show you my results here we go so anywhere on the screen there and when the red box goes green I click as quickly as I can so here goes okay not very good for a first go but that is my first go so I'm going to record that here that was my right hand so I'm going to record that in my table for test one and I'm going to pause now collect all my results you can do the same and then we'll look at calculating our mean together Okay, so I've completed my reaction time test using the computer now, and I've got five results for my right hand and five results for my left hand. And I've done the same calculation. So for the right hand, I added up those five results. I pressed equals and I divided by five. I divided by five because I had five results. And then I rounded my number to the nearest whole number, and that got me 300 and 95. I did the same thing for my left hand results, added them up, divided by five, and that gave me a mean of 385. And I think the conclusion here, 
has to be that there doesn't appear to be a different reaction time between my right hand and my left hand. They're such similar results. I think my conclusion has to be my reaction time of my left hand and my right hand is completely equal. I hope you found that uh, biology lesson interesting. That is actually a GCSE required practical, so you'll definitely revisit in, it, that in the future. Um, if you want to investigate any other things to do with reaction time, then definitely go ahead, record all your results and bring your uh, investigation pack with you to school in September. Hope you've had fun, hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the other videos in preparation to starting school in September. We've got Welcome to the Lab, How to Light a Bunsen Burner and also that Chemistry uh, Making Red Cabbage Indicator. So be sure to check out those videos. Hope you have a good day. Thank you.